Hi, today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the process of labor. Uh, we often get uh, this question that is asked in the Lamas classes where uh, moms ask me, you know, why is or why do some women have a shorter length of labor and why do some women have a longer length of labor? You have perhaps yourself heard, um, you know, that maybe your, one of your friends had a really short, fast labor. She went to the hospital, had a baby, and then there was this other, other, other friend of yours who had, um, you know, maybe many, many hours of labor before she birthed a baby. So um, I think it's good for you to know uh, why the process of labor differs in different women. Um, so when we talk about labor, we um, think about the four P's of labor. The first P being the baby who is the passenger, the second P being the uh, mother's pelvis, uh, the passageway, the third P being the powers of the uterus, which means how strong and long your contractions are, and then the last P is of course the psychology of labor and how comfortable and confident that mother feels for labor to progress. Um, so the first P, let's start with that, that's the baby. The baby's position has a lot to do with how the labor progresses. So most babies uh, will start off, especially for first time mothers, will start off with their back towards uh, the mother's left side, um, about 20% of babies will start towards with, the, with their back towards the mother's right side. Um, so either way, in, in, in either case, that baby eventually then has to make a rotation and turn to face mother's back before that baby can be born. So uh, if a baby starts off with, the, with their being on mother's um, left and then makes this nice turn, that might be one length of labor. But in some, uh, for some babies, uh, they might start off with their um, head facing the mother's back and so then they might have a slightly longer length of labor and might have to make this nice scenic route in order to be born and that would definitely mean another length of labor. So you can see how just the baby's position might alter your length of labor. The other thing that might alter the length of labor is how high or low is this baby's position. A baby that's reasonably high in the mother's pelvis might eventually have to, uh, would ha eventually have to descend a longer way in order to be born. Whereas a baby who is reasonably fit into mother's pelvis might have, uh, you know, a shorter distance to go before being born. So that might also affect the length of the labor as well. Um, so that's as far as the baby is concerned. Now, as far as the mother is concerned. This is the mother's pelvis. Um, usually, uh, the, the, um, in, when in non-pregnant mothers, this pelvis is fairly rigid, but in pregnant mothers, because of the hormone that comes into play, um, this is the front of the pelvis. This is the back. This is the the back of the pelvis, and this is the um, the spinal, uh, the the vertebral, uh, you know, column. The end of your vertebral column. That's your tailbone. That's your coccyx. And these are actually the bones that you end up sitting on. So uh, this is the this is how the pelvis looks kind of forward facing. Um, so this, the, the way the mother's pelvis is during labor does make a big difference in how this labor progresses as well. So like I was talking about earlier, uh, in, in pregnant women starting the fifth month onwards, uh, the hormones help to relax the pelvis and so during labor this pelvis has an ability to kind of give way in different positions. You can move a little bit, you can actually when you're squatting, you can see why but when you're squatting that pelvis opens up a little bit more um, if the mother is on her hands and knees that pelvis again has much more space for this baby to rotate and turn um, while the mom is walking that might again alter the shape of the pelvis and allow for the baby's head to move down if she's climbing stairs two at a time that might again make more space for that baby to come down so it's very important that the mother be allowed to move during labor um, it's very important that uh, that freedom of movement which not only allows for her to manage her pain better but to also allow for this baby to move freely and find itself find its way down through that maternal pelvis and allow for labor to progress beautifully also needs to uh, be considered the third thing that we talked about is the uh, powers of the uh, uterus so 
how strong and long these contractions are um, for a mother whose uh, contractions are very far spaced in early labor that is going to take some time to build up in order to uh, eventually have stronger longer contractions that are closer together so that powers of the uterus need to be nice and strong and uh, so a mother might actually need to rest some time before her labor progresses uh, last but not the least is the psychology of labor having the mother be confident being well prepared about what to expect in her labor and birth, having her birth partner, whether it's the dad, whether it is her mother, um, and having care providers around her who make her feel safe and protected and confident about the process of birth, that it is natural, it's a normal process, and um, things usually do go well, that, uh, that mother's labor will progress nicely versus a mom who is fearful of labor, versus care providers who are not, um, and people not, she does not have people surrounding her who encourage her, that process of labor will actually become longer. So you can see how the, these are the different factors that enhance labor or um, so the, the baby's position, the mother's, um, the mother's uh, you know, how, how well she is able to and be able to free to move around, um, how good her uterus is contracting and how well prepared and confident she is, all of these impact the process of labor.